as we say, a happy new year, happy new uh, 10 years. And today, yeah. And today, uh, the topic is, as you see, you know, just last day of December. Uh, as you see, uh, today is uh, the, the topic will be on variation, uh, mainly human variations. But before getting into it, I just want to say that this is really, uh, in my view, one of the most exciting uh, field that is uh, happening those days, namely to change uh, the very, I wouldn't say old, but the very classical genetic approach in which you look at population, you look at huge cohort and try to get something out of it in view of what is written in our genome that can be applied clinically, medically, whatever, so that it can be really approached towards your own set of variation. This is an open question, a very exciting field that is building, it is uh, currently being developed while we are talking. So this is an ongoing, uh, uh, you know, kind of a new field of understanding. It, sometimes it's called personalized medicine. There are a lot of uh, words for this, but we should remember that uh, this is why I'm mentioning it. Variation has nothing to do specifically for human. It was a very fundamental part in breeding of animals, in agriculture, and so on and so forth. So it's, by now, it got into the human uh, field, mainly because technology has become so available. So exome, genome, uh, 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 panels of specific variation became a routine rather than the exception in the, in the clinics, mainly in the regular clinics. So uh, uh, this is just uh, to remind that uh, there is nothing unique uh, in this aspect, but uh, uh, what I would like to, to cover today is a little bit about the, top, the types of genetic variation. Uh, how, what is the framework for discovery? I'll do it very briefly. Uh, I won't talk much about variant calling. It's a, an, a very important uh, topic, how you decide that this is a variant. This is, of course, very technical and very important. So. I won't uh, put it under the carpet, but I won't elaborate much about it. But whoever is doing really genomics needs to know a little bit more about the calling because everything starts with good calling. So, and then filtration and structural variants. So some definition. Uh, it's very basic, but I want that everybody will understand when we talk about variants what we are talking about. So different version of the same variant, namely the same site and location in the chromosome, are called allele. And allele can be C or T in this specific location, okay? Just as an example. Now, the reference allele refer to the base that is found in the reference that we discussed a lot, you know, and you, you worked about, uh, on the <laughs> reference genome. But don't be confused. It's not always the major one because the reference is what we refer to and doesn't have to be the major one, and a lot of people are mixing the two. So be, be, be aware of this. The other alternative allele is a refer to any base, not just C to T, other than the reference. So it could be the other three if we are talking about a single site, okay, about really a, a single location. The alternative allele is not necessarily the minor, exactly because of what I said about the major. There can be more than one allele per variant. So it has to be encoded in a way that you can capture this, okay? Now, haplotype, it's another very important uh, 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 topic, are blocks in the, gene in the genome with allele that tend to be uh, uh, inherited as, as a block together but uh, it's more often than expected. So it comes with some statistics on each and every variant saying what is the probability, the chance that this one will go with this one always. Is it 100%? They never separate? Or it's just 86% or 30% or zero, okay? So this is a very uh, important point because we are talking about variants but often we talk about a specific variant, but you have the same statement 
on 10 other variants that are in the neighborhood because they are coupled, okay? So another thing that is kind of a trap for a lot of biologists and a lot of uh, geneticists. Okay, the last uh, 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 definition comes exactly because of the haplotype. So LD or uh, linkage disequilibrium is the measure, the actual measure for how often two allele are inherited together. That's exactly in a quantitative way, not just yes or no, okay? So this is important uh, point. Now, just numbers. From the human genome, and that's the, the focus of uh, this discussion, whole genome usually is done by 30 to 50 depth of cover. Namely, on average, each and every base is covered 50 times. Now, the standard below 30 sounds like it's considered low quality. Now, clinically, sometimes when people are looking for uh, uh, you know, lymphoma or in the clinics when uh, people are doing, it can get into 700 or 500 or 1,000. So it can be really deep on a specific case. But this is the average for what we have now on human genome. Let's say if I'm talking about the 1,000 human genome project that gives us a lot of reference genome to work with. So on, you know, this is like a, a broad uh, numbering. So usually uh, uh, the sequencing is co covering 2.8 billion uh, uh, bases and not the magic number of 3.2. Somebody can say why there is these differences? No, wh what, what we usually we are not even dealing with sequencing is mainly the very, very uh, highly repeated area that first of all, it's very hard to do and second, as of now, we can get very little information. So in general, it's not covered well. And it's thrown by the pipeline of uh, sequencing. So again, uh, uh, in each person, there are between three and four million single nucleotide variants that I mentioned. And uh, there are something that uh, I was very surprising, surprised when I saw it about more than half a million insertion deletion that could be quite dramatic when you have insertion deletion that definitely are in the coding and so on. So, so it's not a rare phenomena, that's my point. Is definitely in the coding? Not, no, 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 usually not. But, but it's, more, it's more active genetically than you would guess. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll say in a minute what's the difference between SNP and SNVs. And yeah, so, so there is a tiny de uh, definition issue uh, in a minute. So uh, for a typical individual, we have 60 million base pair that are sequences in the uh, exome in view of the genome. And there are about 80,000 variant. Now I'm talking about the coding. And there are, let's say, 10,000 or something like that, non-synonymous SNP. That, that's just a broad, you know, average, uh, whatever it is. Okay, so in the NIH, they develop a site called Variation Homepage, which is very uh, uh, elaborate and very good. I must say that in my view, the NIH NCBI site is the most appropriate one for variation, rather than the European one that I won't discuss today at all, but th there is a equivalent for the European one. So this is the site just for you to, to have. And there is a very important glossary and that's important. I must say that despite the fact that I, I read it 10 times, it's, it's ongoing uh, developing the glossary itself and exactly how you calculate clinical significance, it's written in the frequent ask question and it's important to, to go there if you really want the actual significance of variants and so on. So the type of variation. Uh, uh, now it's clear that quite a lot of the diseases, definitely Mendelian diseases, but also complex diseases have a genetic background. I mean, no question about it. And uh, there is a really range between the very, I would say, 
simple scenario, simple, not clinically simple, but genetically simple, of cystic fibrosis, Tysacs, and so on, that are simple disease because they are associated with one gene, often a, a very dominant variant, and so on and so forth, to a much more complex genetics makeup, which is often associated with cancer, with predisposition to diseases, and so on. And this is, of course, a, a research topic more than uh, like a, a clear clinical uh, understanding. But as you ask, the SNP is defined as a mutation. Now we like to call it variation, not mutation, just because you don't know what's, you know, it's, it's a more general uh, statement and I think it's better uh, name of mutation that's shared within the population. Now, I, I think I mentioned it already, shared. What does it mean shared? By how much? One percent, half percent? and so on, what population, is it only European, only Caucasian, African, and so on. But the definition is, of course, from the beginning, very bad, but it says 1% of the used population. Okay, so, so SNP, but, but uh, you know, uh, instead of just uh, being say, standing here and say it's a bad definition, I can say that it's very important to have a definition that say it's abundant in the population by at least 1%. Because a lot of uh, things need to be addressed to something that is super rare, extra rare, and something that is very common. It's different approach clinically, medically, uh, uh, investment of companies and so on. So it's not just because uh, they were stupid. Uh, it has to be done, but it's uh, of course unstable definition. So the alternative one, is called, and I like it much better, a single nucleotide variation or variant, which is S and Vs, and many of them are associated, they do not need this uh, threshold saying 1%. So everything that is there, it's S and V, including your own private mutation or variation, right? That it's not fixed in the population, but are in this specific family or in this specific subfamily even, okay? So that, that's important. Now, the indels are also very important. I'm just uh, demonstrating here uh, insertion and deletion. And as I said, it's much less, uh, uh, it's more abundant than anticipated initially. Okay. How short is short? So short can be, uh, when you talk about the indel, you mean this? So uh, again, the, um, I, d I don't think I have the distribution of human, but I'm telling you, maybe I'll show you offline, the distribution of, uh, it's surprising how many instances we have among us of a missing of 100,000 bases. I, I, I didn't uh, uh, anticipate the average is over 1,000 nucleotide in the population. If you just do, do the density plot as you, as you showed, it's 1,000, which is huge, with a huge uh, tail. And there are a lot of healthy people with one million missing here, one million, unbelievable. I, I really, I, I must say that uh, this is one of the completely non-intuitive uh, feeling that it's, a lot, it's, it's okay and uh, I'm saying it because a lot of, um, by now, genetic consulting and so on, we're, so, uh, we're not aware to the fact that many of us do have quite long uh, holes in, in, or, or insertion. Non -coding, non -coding? Uh, mostly non-coding, but of course it could be a regulatory site and so on. So it's not, uh, yeah, okay. So this is the indel, and uh, maybe uh, in the illustration I'll show you something about those numbers, but it's a good question. So now we understand this, I didn't want to elaborate more, but just to say that the SNP has, comes also with a DB SNP, which is a database for SNPs. Why is that? Because SNPs usually come with an index for SNP, and if you see the index start with RS, RS ta 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 ta, means that probably it's an abundant one, okay? So it has also, by, by the index, you can also get a feeling that it's not ultra rare and so on. So, so that's, uh, that helps. Now, as I said, the SNVs are 
not well characterized, they are often private, they are not fixed in the population, and usually we tend to say, which is okay, tend to say that their uh, occurrence, their very rare occurrence, it's either completely not important, which is most of the case, but it could be associated with the many, and when I say many, I'm talking about thousands of rare diseases. Now, rare diseases are by definition occurs, let's say, in one, in less than one to a 10,000 in a population. So that's by definition is low number and often are in this ga game and not in this game. Okay, so this is just to say that if you are looking at a uh, rare disease, usually you look here. Okay, so it's all about frequency of occurrence and what's your population. That's, uh, that was the, the message. Now, in terms of uh, interest of content, as you already uh, elaborate on, there are non synonymous that we consider them not important, but actually they are very important. Can somebody tell me why a non-synonym, namely amino acids is not change and it is within the coding region, will be important? Any guess? Sorry? Let, let, let's put it in the middle of the axon, so even to make it harder for you. I'm telling you, a, a synonym... Okay, okay. So you have to think out of the protein now, and you, you know that the RNA has other function than just to encode the protein, such as binding site. I'm, I'm making it up, of course, but for example, a binding site for RNA, or RNA secondary structure, who knows, right? So, so those are important at some point. And we know of diseases that are associated with non-coding, so just... Uh, Okay, but we know that there is missense, nonsense, stop, gain, stop, and so on. In the non-coding, of course, it's become a little bit harder, but also we have a result. It could be gain and loss of transcription factor as we learn about the, you know, the logo of a binding and so on. So you, 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 you can have a splicing effect and so on. Now, I want to, uh, that everybody understand the term somatic. Somatic means variation that occurs not from, not was not inherited from the parents, but actually was done after conception. Okay, so, so actually it's in all, m most of the time, in all cells of the body, let's say of the child, but not in the parent. N none, none of it in, in, in the parents. So those are, oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, Th that's, I said somatic, but uh, usually, yeah, it's not, inherited, but usually we refer to them in the tumor context. So for example, what are the somatic, the body mutation in view of your own uh, genome, right? Which is, the, the formal term is the germline. The, the, okay. So this is also, and this is the last list of uh, human variation catalog, where the data are coming from. It's an important slide, I won't uh, discuss it, but I want you to have it, knowing where are the resources, the main resource for variation, human variation. So the 1000 Genome Project, I already mentioned, by now it has uh, over 2,500, 2,500 uh, uh, full genome. And there, re there are a few projects in the world that are called the 1 million project, trying to get to 1 million. It's uh, very courageous, but it will happen, I think, faster than we think. The HapMap, which is the original for the 1000 genome, and the HapMap is uh, what started this, and it's, it's very uh, informative because it's not only saying the summary of the two uh, genome, but also they do have a phased genome. Uh, I mean, whoever didn't really understand this, phase genome, namely each and every chromosome, you know the, co the, the connection between the string and not just the average of the two. So it's a, it's a, it has a very nice addition that is important to some. Now the DB uh, DBSnap that I already told you, the Cosmic, which is an excellent resource of any cancer, 
a report, any cancer, with thousands and thousands of uh, uh, reports. The TCGA, which is uh, 14,000 people with two sets of <coughs> genome. One is the germline and the other for the same person, the cancer. So you can have a, uh, a view of a cancer in view of the genome, which is quite unique. So I think this is one of the most courageous. Uh, uh, however, I should just say that uh, we in the lab and other people found that uh, the standardization was not identical. So it's very hard to do to work as a pan-cancer type of analysis. You have to work cancer by cancer because there is no uh, standardization that is good enough to, to work on it. And ClinVar that I'm going to tell you a little bit more about. So just uh, one word on TCGA. I mentioned this, the two definition, germline and somatic. I hope you understand by now. And just I want to mention that despite the fact that we are talking about maybe uh, uh, 30 type of cancers, the real definition, the high level of definition is probably more uh, detailed. And uh, many of them will be defined by the genetics. Okay, so, so the, the definition is now not only by location, uh, origin, type of cells, but actually the, the makeup of the genome. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, maybe I'll skip this, but uh, uh, just to say that in the cancer field, uh, th there are inherited issues that are very complicated because evol the evolution of cancer is very fast. So even to say this is the cancer genome uh, will be at this point, and often it's respond to drug already given so the genome is a drug responding genome and so so it's complicated okay so i'm um, i mean it's much uh, I, I would say cleaner clean to to work with the germline in term of uh, but it's a different type of question that you can ask okay variant calling i said that it's very important i just uh, mentioned three uh, names the fasta q which is the quality control of the reads the bam which is the alignment version of the reads and the VCF that you already know. You know, like the VCF, which is really the summary of the variation changes. So, so there is this, uh, and you'll see it in the literature that all those words are coming up whenever you do any genetics. Okay, so this is the norm. Um, I'll just, as I said, I won't elaborate it, but I should mention that there are many calling uh, methods some became the standard and some are important as well. And uh, for people that are doing genetics from the beginning, often they use more than one method for consistency. So I'm just saying it uh, loud and clear. So this is uh, now about uh, uh, identifiers. As I say, the RSID is important because it gives us the reference uh, uh, for the SNP. And the RV, uh, RCV ta -ta 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 -tam, is the clean var that I'm going to talk about now. Now, for, for, for you that uh, look at really raw data, like the reads themselves, usually they come with two colors, means this direction and that direction. Okay, so you can read from both directions. And th this is just how it uh, looks in the browsers or in this case, it's the regular browser that we already discussed, the UCSC, and immediately you see that in the somatic, in the tumor, you have many, many changes, none in the germline, so you can make your statistics, and I'll skip these statistics. So, uh, do we, do, do, are, are you going to talk about the GWAS or not? GWAS and stuff like that? No, okay, so I, I, I just want to, to say that a very, uh, fundamental and we'll touch about, uh, upon it is to understand what's the difference between gene and co uh, control and cases and uh, statistically and uh, to, to, to people that uh, do not know this may, maybe I'll skip this so okay uh, the last things that we mentioned is the variation that uh, I said that it's uh, very surprising but I should say that a lot of diseases including diseases that are less defined are associated with 
changes in the uh, in their uh, structural variants. Schizophrenia, aut autism, and so on are uh, deeply associated with this aspect. So be be aware that it's not only when gene is missing or gene is uh, uh, duplicated, as we see often in cancer, but also in the germline. Th this has a enormous effect. So let's say the task is to have a gene of interest, to look at the gene, and we want to know what are those variants, what's the molecular consequence, and eventually what's the clinical consequence. Again, talking on the human genome now. But the analogy can be for microbiome, for whatever, for your plant of interest. Okay, so ClinVar. ClinVar is a very interesting archive that's supposed to give us interpretation of variants in a, a, a relative to specific condition. It has a variant level information, so it's, you are not starting with clean var unless you know something about a variant or at least on a gene. We'll, we'll do an illustration. And it's fu fully public. So in a sense, it's like the Wikipedia of the variants. Now, as a, as opposed to Wikipedia, that there are millions of people that can correct it in a minute, the clinical a, a version of the Wikipedia, which is ClinVar, suffer from accumulation and accumulation of data that is inconsistent often. So take it, it's, it's the most important resource for a clinician, but it has inherent problem because it's a public and the uh, curators of ClinVar are not changing what you as a doctor added to ClinVar, as a doctor or researcher for, for that matter. So, so, so uh, there is a quite important level that needs to be uh, with, I would say, high level of criti critical thinking when you look at the ClinVar. This is just to say that, but saying that, it's a submission driven database so you are associated with the submission. You, with, with your name, with your, so, so the submission is responsible to what's written there. I want to, sh to tell you that one way to overcome this difficulty, which is really hard, is to say, show me only the variant that were supported by two independent submitters. And only look at that, for example. Now, because we are talking about rare disease, ultra-rare disease, most, 90% of what have, what's there in ClinVar will not have double submitter, okay? So, so I, I'm just saying that uh, because a lot of clinicians are using it, I'm, uh, I'm saying it loud and clear, it has this inherent unstable issue because it's submitted by uh, uh, people and often uh, it, the submission comes with date and so on and name and so on. However, ClinVar tried to do something very courageous, to talk about the variant, to talk about the exact condition, the interpretation and the evidence to provide it all. So you can say, show me only if it is done by this methodology. Don't show me if it's done by different methodology, clinical methodology often. So it's really accessible. It's a public archive, it's very rich, and it covers phenotype and human variation. Uh, the reporting variant found in patient, but the patient are not reported, so it keeps the privacy of the patient. It's only the variant, no information about the patient, but it's connected to a publication if needed. Therefore, whatever you see, it was consented by the patient. Okay, so there is nothing that is not consented. Now, uh, ClinVar uh, show, allow you to dig into different level of complex complexity. For example, you can look at the variant level submission, which is the, the most uh, downstream part. What, what do you have to say about this variation? Multiple type of structural observation, case uh, level, and experimental evidence on the phenotype. Now, ClinVar is an active partner of this project, which is a very important one, ClinGene, 
which is the curated part of the clean bar. Okay, so I'm saying it because then you can do a better filtration when you try to look for something that at least an expert have been looked at. Now, uh, it reflects both, and that's important, consensus, but conflicting. It leaves the conflict. So this is a, a very uh, non-standard way to think about it. If you kind of highlight the conflicts as an evidence, as an information. Now, you have to understand what's conflict. So for example, there is a clean var supported, and this is became to be the general term, uh, to use a menu, a relatively short menu, of variant consequences, whether it is benign, likely benign, unknown, who knows, probable pathogenic, and pathogenic. So this kind of small menu is used by the submitter, but often one on the same variant, variant level, will say it's benign and the other will say it's pathogenic, right, on the same variant. Now, whether this is a mistake of one of the submitter or a true complexity of the genetic makeup, the second is probably more true, right? So, so because, because there is a lot of epistatic effect, there is not indirect effect, and so on, so you cannot often stay with the level of the variants and understand the disease completely. Now, not only that, remember what I started with, with the LD, with the association of variant and so on and so forth. So be aware, try to combine it all to a one story. And ClinVar keeps the consensus and keeps the conflict, both. And uh, I must say that they do have conflict for them it's an annotation saying that it's at least likely benign, likely pathogen, it's a conflict. If it's a benign and likely benign, they don't call it conflict. Okay, so they, they have a distance uh, uh, matrix some, somehow, yes. If, if the submitters are usually clinicians, right. what are their tools to decide? They see a certain variant in a certain tissue, they don't, how, I it's, it's not, it, how do they know if, if that causes a pathological process or not? If this is responsible so, 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 okay, I, I'll, I'll do the demonstration in a minute, but I want, all, all of those are very good questions, and people try to do a benchmark, saying, how do you know how good the clean var is? Because exactly the question that you are asking. This is why I mentioned the curator part, and for example, they decided only in, I think, December 2018, to do a curation to OMIM, if it comes, if it's already past the pipeline of OMIM, OMIM is the, the uh, resource for Mendelian diseases. So if it comes from OMIM, they take their lead to do the curation. So it's really an ongoing process in which uh, I must say uh, that it's very, it's rather interesting to read even the, the uh, clean bar about or clean bar regulation, how the American, the, the European society for genetics devote few of their annual meeting to discuss exactly those questions. How to do it so it's more stable. How to do it whether to allow the dictionary to be five titles, which is of course not relevant. I mean, the, uh, the complexity is in either other level. Just to give you something very intuitive. If a mutation occurs, and it's really dramatic, let's say it kills the function of a protein, of a kinase, no, no question, let's say from the biochemistry point of view. However, it's a recessive. So is it pathogenic or not? I'm asking you as a doctor. If I see a patient like this and it's not sick, then uh, I will choose nothing, it's benign. So they decided that it's pathogenic, to write pathogenic. So to separate the heritability Model, mod, model from the action. So it's a, you see that you can see this is a right answer, but there is a good reason to do it differently, right? Because, for example, in this specific another patient, there will be only one case, but the other chromosome, there will be a deletion. 
So this person will be pathogenic, right? So, so all those decisions, I just throw a clue so how complex is to merge different layers of the genetics complexity. This is why I mentioned complexity in the beginning. Okay, so ClinVar neither curate content nor modifies. It just accumulates it. Okay, so uh, let's go to the uh, uh, ClinVar uh, resource. Uh, I'll do an uh, illustration. Let's do the illustration. Uh, just uh, for you to, to uh, I wanted just to give a, a, the summary. This is from two years, but you can see that the number of records is expanding dramatically. So there are a lot of records in ClinVar. Uh, the, the criteria are, are uh, match <laughs> with most of them, but I, I should say that one of the criteria is I don't know. So this is the most <laughs> abundant one that the doctors or the clinician that puts it, they don't want to, conv you know, to say what they, they really believe or, or they exactly because what you, you said, and they said not identified. So this is, uh, this is why the numbers are so high. And total gene represented are very large, including variants and so on. So it's an extremely rich uh, uh, source. And just to, say, to, to show you what happened one month, uh, I mean a year later, look at this doubled. This is 2007 beginning of the year and the end of the year. It's already doubled. So you can imagine what's going on now. And uh, this is very uh, okay. So let's go for ClinVar and I'll do it uh, with uh, just to illustrate this. Okay. also to become better and I must say that uh, there are, I don't want to overload you too much, but uh, there are that are kind of, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but I mentioned them. One is called G-O, eh, not G-O, S-O, uh, S-O, you, you, you know, why is it, what, what's the S is? I think uh, sequence ontology. Sequence ontology tr tr try to give everything within a kind of a dictionary ontology, very uh, organized way. So this is one important uh, resource that uh, uh, showing, for example, that coding and frameship and all these are can be formalized in a more systematic way. And the other is the human phenotype ontology. Another very important, fairly new, it's called HPO. We won't discuss it. I, we don't uh, give any exercise on this, on the HPO. No, so HPO become to be a, a fairly good ontology that really provide also the level of tissues and uh, complexity, and it's very good for medical uh, complexity and focus. So let's say that I uh, the uh, gene, and I'll say, um, I'll give you a gene that uh, we recently Okay, so you start with the gene, and by the way, you can start with the location. Uh, I mean, uh, like always, you can start with many uh, different, uh, uh, you know, start point, and immediately it tell you that this is the gene, and it it says I'm just uh, 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 it says that there is 443 records for this. Now you can say let's expand this. Why? Because I want to search. Clean a record that mentioned this gene. This is also okay. You can, you know, because somebody say this gene related to this gene, that's another expansion. But I want to go there. And immediately you see that there are 400 and a, a something record. However, the most important part, and this is uh, related to some of the questions that have been here, is this menu. Because this menu already uh, partitioned this 443 into some kind of a uh, um, let, let's go for this. 
What is the clinical significance? Is it conflicting? Is it benign? Likely benign and so on. This is the, 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 the stuff that I already discussed. So immediately you can see that, I don't know, a quarter of it, it's likely benign plus benign, and there are 33 that are, they are sure it's pathology, and about 100 that is likely pathology altogether, right, those two. So a quarter of this uh, variance seems to be pathology, uh, of pathology uh, consequences. Now the second part is the molecular consequences, not the clinical consequences, but molecular consequences. Namely, one type of mutation of this variant, whether it is a frame shift. Now, frame shift, you understand that frame shift is pretty dramatic, but I just want to make a comment. We are not talking about a frame shift that is within frame. So, a deletion of three will not be considered there. Okay? So, it's a frame shift that is a bad frame shift. Either one, two, but not three, four, five, or whatever. Now, you can have a, a non-coding RNA as well and so on. Now, then you ask what type of the variation is it? SNP, SNV, deletion, duplication, and so on. So you can see, first of all, that you have uh, uh, 100 out of 400 that are deletion or duplication. And not just, I'm not saying just, but not single nucleotide. Okay. And now you can ask about the length. What is the length of this variation? And immediately you see that most of it in this case are of, or almost out of the 400, 390 are less than 50. But look at this. This is 1 million. This is 3 million. This is over 5 million. So there are people that have a deletion of 5 million. Or half of the chromosome. So, okay, so, so this is also a, a, a so let, let's look at this. I, I want to, to look at a, a SNP, let's say. So let's look at this and let's look at uh, not of the frame shift but of the missense. Okay? So I'm focusing myself on the missense and less than 50 and so on. And uh, the other things that you can look at, it, do you have, I mentioned, multiple symmetry? to the same variant, but independent events, okay? So, so now you have more confidence of what you're looking, and so on. So this is another way to look at it, and single submitter, and you can also look at the origin, whether it's a germline or the novel. So you can see that it's 10 to 1 germline, which is not the case in many uh, severe diseases severe, like rare diseases and so on, the fraction of the novel is very high. Okay, so this is a, a different case. And now the method, whether a research, how many publications, so on, and whether it's a single gene, why could it be, why could it be more than single gene? I limited myself only to 50 nucleotide. So what could it be? cases there is a translocation let's say and immediately you cross two genes okay so so if you think about it you can uh, see that there are other let's say not that standard uh, events that can happen and you have to allow menu to cover those cases and so on okay so once we uh, the, uh, uh, went through this uh, so now we are in chief it tells us exactly what are the filters we use so now we are only with 107 cases, and it's immediately show, and this is uh, something that I want to show you, this is the norm of how you write. You write the NM, now you know what's the NM, the messenger RNA true model of the mRNA. You can write it in the, in the past. This is the gene. This is C, means coding. This is a... Uh, 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 25, uh, just 20, G to A, and it's change value at, at position 9 to isoleucine. Okay? This is the, the format. This is the way the mind is what clinicians throughout the world share uh, information. 
And just to tell you again, you are not, uh, most of you are not clinicians, but I kind of like it that this line you can put in a, a web that says find an expert. So you put this mutation and immediately you get the expert in the world that are clinicians themselves that are like to collaborate on this specific variation, which is something I don't know of other society or community that are so open to collaborate and try to find other support to a specific variant. So this is very nice. I didn't know about it, but my clinician friend, geneticist, told me, just put it there and you'll get whatever you need. So, so I put it there and said, what is it? I <laughs> never heard of it, so, so, uh, but it's an important resource today. And now you have the protein uh, changes. So in all cases, I picked less than 50, I picked missense. So it's not surprising that I see serine to proline, I see arginine to glycine and so on. Condition, as I said, not provided is the most uh, because people are afraid to write what they do, are not sure. But as you can see, if you see that a, a, a lot of people were sequenced because of epileptic uh, uh, events. And as you can see, child epileptic is the most, uh, most uh, uh, dominant. Uh, uh. And you can see also, you know, quite, quite a lot of, uh, this is a free text, so you can see quite a lot of uh, uh, information. And immediately, whether it's pathologically uncertain and so on, with the uh, uh, when was it uh, submitted, and what's the criteria criteria was provided or not, and whether it's conflicting or not, as I said. And just to finish up, just to say that uh, okay, uh, just to say this is the variant. A, a clean bar. So the variant clean bar uh, is uh, uh, shown there. So if we go there, let's say, to the specific, you get a clean bar, and now you are in a different resolution. Now you are in a resolution of this specific variant. So now you are out of clean bar. You are already, you are still in clean bar, but you, you are already in this, as I said, line that tells exactly, and immediately it tells you a resolution status. How much was it consistent? How many people really support this? So immediately you get a feeling for the reliability of this uh, 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 report. So the v, v, CV, this is clean bar, the CV, and the V mean variant, okay? So this is the variant level. Uh, and the, there is a, a single nucleotide and so on, and immediately it connects you to uh, uh, this allele ID, location, and as you can see, as we discussed it a couple of times, the two most uh, important genes, the 37, 38, they are all associated with it, so you can keep working with the version that you like. And that, that, that's good, so you don't have to do the conversion in this uh, case, and immediately they tell you what happened to, this is the mRNA, but where is it in the in the uh, uh, nucleotide, in the genome, not only in the mRNA and so on and so forth. So you have the clean gene that I already mentioned, and it has a version in the DB. So this specific one is probably not that rare because it's a DB already, okay? The, uh, uh, as I mentioned, it's a, the DB snip. Now the DB snip report on this in the human G2A, publication, no citation, and so on. And it tells us what is the frequency. So the RS, the RS is beyond the SNP 1%. And in this specific case, they tell us that one out of 230,000 allele was there. So is it rare? Super rare, right? So it's only one event that was reported in the, uh, some kind of a general code that I won't uh, go into it. It's called the GNOMAD that is very important. Now, the location and so on, and this is the gene, and immediately you can see what, where it's the first uh, uh, letter of the codon, change from valley to both, applied to variant one, variant two, and to other isoform of the, 
of the case, and now you get it to to the browser. So you can see what are the, the variant in the left side or in the right side, and immediately you see the patch of this 